Our next honoree has been vitally involved in the fabric of the Detroit Windsor communities and their endeavors providing employment opportunities to over 5,000 families. His entrepreneurial spirit and leadership and vision have allowed him to systematically shepherd the growth of his family business from a three-truck operation to a North American-wide, multifaceted network that includes the Ambassador Bridge, Central Transport, Logistics Insight Corporation, PAM Transportation Services, Inc., and Universal Truckload Services. As President and CEO of Centra Incorporated, he believes in our great state of Michigan, and he looks forward to continuing to make Detroit a great place to work and to raise a family. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome this evening's Entrepreneur of the Year Award winner, Mr. Manuel Matty J. Maroon. I don't bore you too much. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ambassador Neal. And my fellow honorees, and all of you. You are an extraordinary organization that has made the impossible possible. Your humanitarian causes are overwhelming and deserving of all the support of, for Michigan's future. Tonight, I'd like to tell you something about me. <clears throat> my, grand, my, my grandfather, my father's father, was born in uh, Lebanon, Syria, Lebanon, and his name was Hanna Lahud Saliba Maroon. My, mother's father was born in Lebanon also, and his name was <clears throat> Masoud Yamuni. They, uh, they came to the United States uh, quite circuitously. They went to Argentina, they went back to Lebanon. Lebanon, they went to Quebec City, and from Quebec City, they went to Windsor and then Detroit. My mother, her family went to Cuba. She was born in Cuba. They went back to Lebanon and then came back to Detroit. A lot of trips across the ocean. I was born in 1927 on East Grand Boulevard in East Lafayette in Detroit. We lost our home during the Depression, and we moved to Congress in Brevard. My dad had a gas station there, and my grandfather did too. And I worked there during my early years, pumping gas and sweeping out buses. As time went by, I was very fortunate, and I went to UVD High School in Notre Dame, and then wanted to be a doctor. I studied chemistry, biology, math, and physics, but I couldn't get into medical school. There was a long line of veterans ahead of me, and they had priority. So I continued working for my dad, who at that time had a small trucking company. And I learned transportation, and I made it my career. Somehow, I was fortunate to buy the bridge. I bought it on the New York Stock Exchange, and the shares that were still missing were owned by Warren Buffett. And he was kind enough to sell it to me to take it private. If I can get my notes right. <laughs> um, we've owned the bridge for 30 years. It is now the busiest crossing in North America. We handled 31% of all the 
traffic between Canada and the United States as far as goods sold and bought. Today, we have an opportunity to build a second span alongside of it and bring on a lot of jobs, 4,000 jobs. It's necessary because the bridge is getting old. It's 80 years old. Sounds like me. <laughs> and uh, we're very close. We know how to do it. We can finance it. We can do a good job. I've always been proud of my Arabic heritage. I think I broke it when I married my wife a little bit. But other than that, I'm the real McCoy. Thank you very, very much. There's an old joke somewhere that begins, if you believe that, I've got a bridge I could sell you. <laughs> Here's the only guy in the world that said, OK. <laughs> what a phenomenal story. Thank you, Maddie, and congratulations. Our, our next award presentation for the evening goes to a very dedicated community leader, a Lebanese immigrant. He's accomplished many things especially as a business person who puts forth his time, energy, and heart into whatever comes his way. His community leadership led him to receive an appointment on ACC's Board of Directors in 2004. As an active board member, he's eager to help in any way he can to support ACC's many programs and services. Ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of ACC's 2009 Board Member of the Year Award, Walid Khalifa. Good evening, everyone. Thank you to ACC, Dr. Fakhouri, and the Board of Directors. I'm honored and proud to be a part of such dynamic organization. I have enjoyed being a part of the work ACC provides and believe strongly in their mission to serve. It has truly been a wonderful experience, and I look forward to continued and growing the relationship. Thank you, Haifa, and thank you. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce you to this evening's signature sponsor, the Ford Motor Company Fund. They are devoted partners committed to supporting a broad range of initiatives aimed at improving the quality of life within our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome from this year, or this year's signature sponsor, the Ford Motor Company Fund, Director of Community Development and Fund Operations, Pamela Alexander, for some remarks this evening. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I will be very brief so we can get on to some of our honored, spe our honored speaker tonight. I am really happy to be here tonight representing Ford Motor Company. Once again, we're the signature sponsor of this event, and I think we only need to look around this room and to look at the work of ACC to see why we continue to support such an important organization. There's been, as usual, a lot of attention around Detroit of late, you know, time articles and things like that that you see in airports. But I really think that all you need to do is look at tonight's honorees, look at the leadership that we have in our communities through groups like ACC, and I don't think there's any doubt that Detroit is coming back and will continue to come back. So I'm proud to be part of this. I just want you to know that from Ford's perspective, we look forward to being part of the solution moving forward as well. We are continuing to invest in people. We are continuing to invest into, in communities. Uh, both in terms of education and some of the many programs like Dr. Fakhouri and her group lead uh, in their project up on Seven Mile because we know education is the key and you really can't move forward without educating your youth, but also in terms of serving some of the immediate needs due to the economic crisis that we are facing. Uh, we fed 11,000 seniors holiday meals last year. We will be doing that again this year because of reductions in funding so that they will be able to have meals on the holidays. And we have various other hunger programs and things like that that we implemented over the summer to address some of the needs for students who weren't getting school lunches, things like that. So I just want to let you know that we are continuing to invest in all of you. We are continuing to invest in Southeast Michigan and we look forward to working with you moving forward. Have a good evening.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our awards presentation this evening, but we've got much more to talk about and people to hear from. Congratulations, first of all, to all of our 2009 recipients, and thank you for your leadership and your commitment to our communities. One round of applause for all of them. Now, it's my, my great honor to be back with you this year as MC. I've been here before. Last year, I got a call from Dr. Haifa Fakuri, and at first I said yes, and then I had to turn her down. That's not the usual. Uh, last year, my daughter was actually married on the very night of this award ceremony, and she's doing well. And uh, so that was the only reason I missed, because I told Haifa that I'm a cheap date. Diet Coke and falafel. <laughs> Makes you a little gassy, but I'm here. So I'm back and I'm glad to be here with all of you. And it's a great honor for me to introduce to you this evening the woman behind the organization who is responsible for me being here and for much success and all of the prolific achievements of ACC. It's ACC's President and Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Haifa Fakuri. And as we gather tonight honoring dedicated leaders from all walks of life who are committed to enhancing the quality of life and improving communities through unwavering dedication, Dr. Fakuri has certainly done her share. She is the motivation behind what you see here tonight. She's inspiring hope and providing resources to communities and people in need for 30 years. She is, without a doubt, an extraordinary woman. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome ACC's President and CEO, Dr. Haifa Fakuri. Thank you, Chuck. In addition to the falafel, we will have mjaddara for you tonight, your favorite plate. So thanks again, and my appreciation, and thanks to all of you for being here with us to celebrate the 30th years of our achievement and accomplishment to serve the community, years of commitment and dedication. And without the board, the dedication of the board, and the staff, and your support, the sponsors, the contributors, we would not have been here tonight. My appreciation to all of you and to Dr. Khoury, who took the walk with me to go through rough times and good times to provide to the community at large. It took us 30 years to build, and it will take us additional 30 years to expand, and we look forward to continue to serve our community wherever they are and to bridge the gap between our newcomers and the mainstream community. Particularly this year and last year, we saw so many suffering of the Iraqi refugee who came to this country fleeing Iraq because of the you know, stability, instability and rest in Iraq. And many of them came from professional background, high caliber, very successful people. They just came here fleeing for their lives and to establish a new home. And somehow, they are not uh, actually happy with their plight because of you know, the economic condition, the situation we are going through in our state. But with the help of many people like you and others, we are able to give support to the new refugee of Iraq. And we hope uh, we will be able to do more and more for the women and kids of the Iraqi refugee. Tonight with us, we have an outstanding ambassador, uh, the ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain, a young lady, a dynamic woman, who broke the chains of barrier and the glass ceiling, and uh, she was the first ambassador to be appointed to the United States from the Kingdom of Bahrain. We are honored to have with us Nunu, Ambassador Huda Nunu, who is, as I mentioned, the first ambassador to the United States, in addition to her current role as ambassador to the United States of America, she served with His Majesty the King Sheikh Hamad bin Sultan Al Khalifa, who appointed her to the Shura Council. And the Shura Council is similar to the American Parliament or the US Congress. And she was an activist in the human rights issue of Bahrain and led so many, uh, I would say, women movement in Bahrain to fight for equality and justice. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy and honored and delighted to have with us Huda Nunu, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Dr. Huda. Thank you, Dr. Haifa, for your kind introduction. 
Good evening, everybody. And first of all, let me congratulate all the recipients of the awards. I'm sure you deserve them. I'm very happy to be here in Detroit. I'm particularly delighted to share this evening with all of you as we celebrate three fruitful decades in which the Arab, American, and Chaldean Council have displayed remarkable devotion and commitment to the diverse communities in Metro Detroit. ACC's many specialized services, coupled with their unwavering loyalty to the communities and people they serve daily, is an important resource to us in Washington, D.C. and internationally. The mission of ACC is to support the overall well-being of the community. Programs deliver various educational, employment and training, behavioral health, youth recreation and self-enrichment services, cultural activities, immigration and health services. ACC's role in breaking barriers and blending the East with the West in a way reminds me of the role of my country in the Middle East. This very spirit of communion is quite characteristic of Bahrain. After all, we are an island nation. I realize that some of you may not be familiar with Bahrain, so allow me to provide you with some background information. Bahrain is the Arabic term for two seas, which refers to the freshwater springs that are found within the salty seas surrounding it. It comprises of a collection of 33 islands on the western side of the Arabian Gulf and is linked to Saudi Arabia by a causeway. While the US is a continental-sized country of 300 million people and a GDP of $14 trillion, Bahrain's population is around a million and its GDP is estimated at $26 billion. Sitting astride an important trading route, Bahrain has been a crossroads for centuries. As a consequence of its trading culture dating back to ancient times, Bahrain has been and remains perhaps the most cosmopolitan of the Gulf states. In US-Bahrain bilateral context, our ties are strong, multifaceted, and long-standing. The relationship was recently crowned with the signing of the US-Bahrain Free Trade Agreement in 2006. Our two countries have worked closely together since diplomatic relations were established immediately after Bahrain's independence in 1971. Our friendship dates back to more than a century. In the commercial context, several characteristics make Bahrain stand out as a regional center. The first is its economic freedom. Bahrain ranks first among the 17 Middle East North Africa region countries and 16th in the world, according to the latest index of economic freedom. The open economic environment in Bahrain has helped to propel a construction boom that includes the multi-billion dollar projects such as the World Trade Center and the Bahrain Financial Harbor. Second, Bahrain is a gateway to other markets in the area, as well as in Africa, Asia, and Europe. As a member of the Gulf Cooperation Council, it had been a leading voice in favor of opening trade among the six GCC countries themselves and establishing liberal trade policies regarding GCC trade with other countries. It is also a regional transportation and infrastructure hub. An indicator of Bahrain's regional commercial standing is the fact that it is the first financial center in the Gulf and is home to more than 440 banks, most of them with a regional focus. Thirdly, Bahrain is a great place to live. With its multicultural environment, Bahrain has been attractive to foreigners ever since it became known for its pearl diving. Cartier himself used to come to Bahrain to choose the pearls for his jewelry. Bahrain is still known for its pearls, but the pearling now occurs in Manama's souks rather than in the surrounding seas. In the political context, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has led the way with governmental, economic, and educational reforms. Constitutionally, he has set in train a process that has created a bicameral legislature and ameliorated relations among communities in Bahrain. On an educational level, His Majesty believes that Bahrain's greatest asset is its people and has initiated changes to revamp the country's schools into a modern system. Economically, his actions to open up Bahrain's open economy has helped spur a GDP growth rate of nearly 7% in recent years. His Majesty is seeking to further transform Bahrain through the Economic Vision 2030, which has as one of its goals to double per capita GDP. During the current economic crisis, it has been our diversification strategy that has enabled us to sustain our growth. Bahrain was the first producer of oil in the Gulf region, which was discovered in 1932 and has also been the first to witness depleting reserves. We understood this was coming some time ago and have long sought to diversify our economy away from reliance on oil production. We recognize that Bahrain's economic welfare is based on having cultivated a remarkably diversified economy and creating a business-friendly hub for regional commerce. 
The road ahead for Bahrain is one of change and promise as the kingdom continues in its path of reforms despite these uncertain times. We have been welcoming foreign investors for decades and are committed to understanding their needs while helping them prosper. Bahrain and Detroit share, share some striking similarities. We both are commercially oriented, innovative, and forward-looking. We also have a common desire for a high quality of life for our citizens. Much like, this, much like Detroit, Bahrain's values and aspirations prioritize civic participation and commercial vibrancy. Bahrain also places great emphasis on the importance of a well-educated citizenry, fully capable of contributing to and benefiting from economic development. In today's global world, it is crucial for us to work together as institutions, governments, and individuals to provide the basic necessities and tools to assist the less fortunate and undeserved of our vast yet intertwined communities. For 30 years, ACC has done just that. They have served as a bridge of understanding, a bridge of hope, and a bridge to dreams, dreamt by countless individuals and their families. These individuals not only benefit from the specialized services, but also are empowered by the necessary resources made available to them to help sustain their newly found lifestyle and independence. On behalf of Bahrain, thank you for being an invaluable resource locally, nationally, and internationally. May the next 30 years be filled with continuous growth and success opportunities for all. Thank you. Chuck, this one is not on the script. We present to you the globe, and we are here in Michigan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. We wanted to also recognize, if you would, uh, a few special guests in the audience tonight. Dwight Dean, the Regional Director of the U.S. Census, is with us. General Burton Francisco, who is with the National Guard. I know I saw uh, Congressman Gary Peters. Any other elected officials? Would all of you like to please stand? Local, state, national, please stand so we could all honor you and thank you for your contributions and your attendance here today. Thank you very much. Before we wrap up this evening, there's one more thing left on the agenda, and if I can please have you turn your attention to the screens one more time for a very special look inside of one woman's dedication to a cause. Surprise. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is very difficult to cram 30 years of achievements in a few minutes. As board chairman of ACC, the board has created a new 
award that's going to be considered every year or whenever it's, uh, it's, it's needed for special people. In the word of Father Bedin, who was the first chairman of, the, of this organization, Father, would you please join me? Father Bedin has said there would be no ACC without Haifa Fakhouri, and that is the truth. Father Bedin was one of the original members who started this organization with Haifa, and he has been shepherding it for the last 30 years. Uh, he has given me so many uh, aspirations in, in, in being the chairman of this, of this organization. Based on that, the board of directors has created a new award. This award is called the Visionary Award. This Visionary Award recognizes the advancement of the quality of life in this, in this community. It would, look, it would look for a person who has contributed many years for the, wealth, for the welfare recipient who needed it, the community who needed safe haven for school programs and activities, and, and all the uh, work that's needed for the, mentally, for the mentally challenged, and regardless of race, religion, or national origin. Because of that, because of creating this award, the board has felt very uh, fortunate to be able to present this award this year to Dr. Haifa Fahuri, who's been our leader for 30 years. And by the way, she is surprised at it. We kept it as much as we can. Oh. Well, I'm very pleased to be here at a night that I didn't ever expect to be a part of. It was 30 years, and I look back at 30 years, and I know this 30 years would not have taken place if it wasn't for this lady that's over here at my side. We went through some tough times. I remember when I had hair. <laughs> you saw the picture up there a while ago. I had hair on my head. And in those days, I could do a lot of work. Well, we worked, and we worked hard to fulfill a vision that this lady had, a vision that has pretty much come true through a lot of hard work on her part, and her desire to prove that dreams can be possible in this country. A dream to take care of those who were not able to take care of themselves. A dream to see potential of people working towards a potential. And she has seen that in her lifetime. And we are very, very, very proud of this young lady. What young? That's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to me, you're still young. You know, after you pass 80, you look back, and people that are in their early 50s are still young. <laughs> thank you, Father. Well, thank you very much. I want to call Radwan to come uh, here to the podium. I want to share this with him. Radwan, where are you? Congratulations. Job well thank done. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Father. You're welcome, honey. You deserve it. You deserve it. Thank you. This is not planned, honestly. <laughs> we discussed it at the board meeting. The first two founding members, Mr. Salman Sesi and Father Bedin, the longest serving board members, <laughs> we are going to name two of the buildings, Salman Sesi building on Seven Mile and Father Bedin building on Seven Mile. So it has nothing to do with this. No. <laughs> thank, Th you. Th thank you very this, much. That is a surprise. <laughs> Abu Maher, come up here. To all the board members, my appreciation and thanks because it was really a good journey to serve our community. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.
It was my motion that this is a very little thing for you because you deserve much more than thank, this. Thank you very much. Thanks. It's all yours, Chuck. Thank you, Abe. One more round of applause for Dr. Haifa Fakuri. And I know I neglected a lot of people who were here when we asked him to stand. Uh, we saw one of the faces in the video. Bob Facano is here, I know, from Wayne County. Mike Bishop is here, John Papa George. So thank you very much to the elected officials. If I missed your name, I didn't have it on a list. So that's the way we roll on television. If there's no prompter, that's all you get. Um, who am I? Congressman Conyers is here? Where are you, Congressman Conyers? Thank you very much for being here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be a wrap for our awards presentation tonight. Once again, congratulations to all of our 2009 award recipients, and thank you to all of our speakers tonight. We will encourage you to please check out your programs. If you would like to support uh, ACC, you can go on the World Wide Web to myacc.org. You can also refer to it in your program. Keep it with you so you can see all the good works that they do. It's hard to wrap it up into just a, a short video. Our program is coming to an end right now, but we will continue with our special celebrations and dedications tonight. We have a wonderful dinner planned for you. Entertainment. I will be belly dancing after. <laughs> well, you haven't seen my belly yet, but I will be. The, no, I'm kidding. The Arabian Nights. The Arabian Nights. Uh, are uh, here tonight, and they're going to uh, be performing for us while we get dinner underway. We also wanted to recognize uh, Benny Napoleon, who is here with us tonight. Benny, where are you? Sheriff Benny Napoleon, nice to have you with us. So please remain seated, have dinner, enjoy your meal. It is my honor and privilege to be back with you. To my wife, Susan, who puts up with uh, us being away from our kids, and to our five kids, which is like seven Canadian. Thanks to them. It's a joke. Thanks to them for allowing Dad to be out of the house tonight. Thank you for having me here. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. You here at the podium. You are well known globally now. In Jordan, they see you. In Syria, in Lebanon, everywhere. So You're this is the globe. It's all Worldwide. yours. Thank you very, very much for your commitment and your thank services you. to thank the thank council. You, and thank you all for being here with us tonight. Enjoy dinner.